Some of the previous research that's been conducted with MDMA uh, with brain imaging has looked at how MDMA influences our processing of emotions and in order to do that they presented emotional faces and they found that uh, a certain region in the brain called the amygdala which is very sensitive to the presentation of, of fear uh, under MDMA the response of the brain to to the fearful faces is attenuated, it's decreased. So that sort of suggests that MDMA may, may reduce the fear response essentially, which is the kind of thing which might support the use of MDMA in psychotherapy for certain psychiatric disorders. Uh, it's also the kind of evidence which might suggest that, or it might sort of explain why MDMA may um, be pro-social, why people might be more inclined to talk to other people, to talk to strangers and to open up that they don't feel anxious and that they can, they can do that um, more freely. Um, and another aspect of that study, when, uh, when the scientists presented um, happy faces, happy emotions, uh, there's a certain region in the brain which responds to um, positive, uh, positive reward essentially and that region, there was increased activity in that region when these happy faces were presented. So there was uh, evidence there to suggest that MDMA sort of produces a kind of positive bias, that the brain responds to a greater extent to positive stimuli and to a lesser extent to negative stimuli. So it's the kind of thing which might support the use of MDMA in psychotherapy for psychiatric disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder. The reason why um, I work in this field is, first of all, that I think, because, because the, 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 what we are actually covering also beside this specific project is also what is the neurobiology behind um, addiction. What is, and I think that is really important to get more knowledge about addiction. First of all, maybe in the future to be able to develop uh, uh, treatments for addictions, pharmaceutical treatments, but also the whole taboo about addicts and being addicted. I think that has to be broken down by actually providing more knowledge about what's going on in the brain. I think that's my main reason to be in this field. And then we use different psychoactive com compounds to understand more about these systems in the brain. And, and that's why this study is also very interesting for us. My interest in getting uh, involved in this particular area of research was really fueled by an interest in psychology. So I was very interested in, in consciousness and how the brain uh, generates this amazing experience of consciousness that we have and what happens in certain altered states of consciousness where consciousness can change quite dramatically. Um, I, I thought it just naturally uh, curious and intriguing what's going on in the brain when consciousness can change, for instance in dreaming or under certain drugs which, which significantly change consciousness. So that really was my motivation for getting into this area of psychopharmacology, how drugs work in the brain. And then from studying uh, psychopharmacology and looking at certain drugs that, that change consciousness, um, it was a natural evolution to start looking at MDMA because there's a lot of interest in the drug um, as a, a potential therapeutic agent that it might be useful in psychotherapy and there's also a huge amount of just um, excitement and interest in MDMA because of mainly because of all the, the media fascination around it a certain scare story certain uh, sensational stories around MDMA and so it just feels important to really get at the truth and not at these you know, not be swayed by uh, sensational media re reporting. So that for me is a major motivating factor for, for doing this research. In terms of research that we'd like to carry out after this trial, um, 
certain aspects of the study that we're carrying out is linked to the um, idea that MDMA may be useful as a tool to assist psychotherapy and specifically psychotherapy for po post-traumatic stress disorder. And so there, there is some um, motivation. There's a, there's a trial that's been carried out in America which shows quite positive results. There's another trial which uh, was a little bit more um, equivocal in its, um, in its uh, findings. And so we'd like to carry out a trial here in the UK um, to look at whether MDMA may be effective in patients suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and to see if it can help them. In terms of the research that we'll be carrying out after this trial, uh, we've received a major grant, an MRC grant, to carry out a study looking at psilocybin, which is the active component of magic mushrooms, and how psilocybin may be effective as a treatment for treatment-resistant depression. So this is depression that hasn't responded to other treatments. And so really, it's a scenario where these patients are running out of hope. There's very little that can be done for them, and some of the interventions in, in that uh, scenario are quite extreme. For instance, electroconvulsive therapy and even um, surgical techniques. So we're looking at psilocybin as a potential treatment for major depression, and that's really where we're, we're going next in terms of our research.